Good morning, YouTube. Monday morning, rise and shine. Let's talk about intimacy. I was thinking about intimacy. Intimacy with your mate, intimacy with the Holy Spirit, intimacy. When you're intimate with your mate, that is between the two of you. Much like the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Much like your relationship with your God. Why is it that when you pray, you pray for everybody to hear? When the Bible that you want to hold me accountable to tells you to pray without ceasing, tells you to pray where others cannot hear you and don't be in the streets praying like the heathens. Just like it tell you about fastening down them trees in the woods like the heathens do. But you heathens keep praying for the world to hear you. And what that does is allow the enemy in your prayer and he can intercept it, interject it, and derail it and cause a delay. So when you pray, that is between you and your creator and the Holy Spirit. That is not for your sister, your brother, your aunt, the church, the man, it is for you. And it is a very rewarding relationship that at three o'clock in the morning, you can go to the spirit when you feeling weak and, you know, you need comforting. I can't call nobody at three o'clock in the morning, waking them up. I used to call my grandmother and she would answer just like I am the same way. If I hear that phone, I will answer. Only time I won't is if I'm really out of it. But I used to answer all the time, no matter what. But I've gotten away from giving of myself to that degree. Because I used to give myself away till I had no more to give. Now I'm not doing that. And now I don't feel the same for people because of what has happened to me. I will never see people in the same light. Never, because something made you stalk me, haunt me, and try to kill me. And then call it God, because you were doing it for God to get me back into the fold, the imprisonment, the mind, the crown of thorns, and camping the brain instead of being free, knowing yourself, connecting to yourself. Connecting to the spirit, connecting to the earth, the planet, the plants, the people. But you learn that there are just about more evil than good in this lo- in this world. And you'll learn that they do call evil good and good evil in this time. Because everybody who did that stuff to me, they felt justified and then they lie and say because you wasn't in the church. Then they lie and say because you didn't go to your son's funeral. Then they lie before he even died. It was just I wasn't in the church. I want to see your key to heaven or hell because my Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So how do you be concerned about another man when you don't know where your soul going? If you haven't crossed over as I did, like I told a pastor, you can't tell me what's on the other side. Now, when you cross over, you can tell me about your experience and I'll hear it, but I know what mine was and mine. I'm going to hold wholeheartedly that I am called chosen And I will be vindicated. Every liar will have their tongue silenced. I will be vindicated. I've been lied on more than once. My son's father tried to steal my son. My daughter linked up with him because... I used to take care of my granddaughter and she felt I'm trying to get her daughter. So she linked up with him and the other daughter linked up because she had a no good mate and doing bull crap to him. So they figured they'll link all up. Everybody want to link up and cause me a problem and show me something. Well, what I've seen is the devil. My kids got a spirit in them that came from their father. My 
kids got a spirit in them that didn't come from me. But it took two of us. And there is a side of them, that caring, loving side, that came from me. I was so caring, so loving, that I will never be the same way I was. But I am with kids. I am with animals. I am with nature. I treat people like I want to be treated. I don't harm anybody. But you don't violate me because I can violate you. But I have learned in my older years that my violating don't come from these hands. My violating comes from the mind. And when I talk to my Holy Spirit, he will level the playing field. Great rising to you all on this Monday. Hoping to have a good day. Hoping to change my frequency and keep it higher than it's been here lately because I've been doing a lot of mourning for my son. And I'm having a hard time with raising my frequency to the level I want it raised, not man. So people, well, if she ain't in the church, she can't call me. And, and you know, we want to hear her pray. If she pray to God, then, ooh, she talking that witchcraft stuff. She, she dealing in rocks and stones and they may break my bones. You know, they scared of stones, which is nature which is our ancestors they scared of truth then they got the church telling them the dead know nothing the dead asleep your slave master told you that because he didn't want you consulting your ancestors and leading you to the truth so that was an insert then they'll say oh you know they was good but they looking down on us now They looking down on us now? Thought they was dead and they know nothing. Make up my mind or your mind. Mine is made. I know who I am and I know whose I am. And I know I am called, chosen, and I am divine. And I am great. And I am prosperous. And I am protected. And I am loved. And I am loving. And I am loved by the Most High God. And that's all that matters to me. Because if he be for me, he's more than the world who is against me. And I have had the world against me. Trying to get me into a religion. My grandmother used to do rituals. She used to put cabbages in her cabinet every New Year's to bring money in the house. That's a ritual. That's witchcraft. But we call witchcraft, witchcraft, and gave it a negative connotation and say, oh, skull and bones, don't go in here. You know, when you see that skull and the cross, it means danger, poison, don't go. They did that so that it would have a negative connotation, just like they created the word conspiracy, so that it would have a negative connotation. And when you hear these things, you think, oh, ooh, get back. So I have been abandoned by my family because... She's doing evil, and the church want to hear me pray to help me. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I don't believe in what you believe in, in, apparently, because what's in me is all love, and what's in you is hell and damnation, and ain't nothing good about it, because I would not torture nobody. I wouldn't have stalked nobody. I wouldn't have lied. I wouldn't have doctored on some videos and pictures and made it say that they said this, those are of the enemy and when we have to look at an individual's not the action just the action but negative needs a charge from positive and you were gravitating and holding on and depleting me my positive energy with all that, duh, 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 this one, I tell you, I had about a million white people after me and a million black people after me. That's why I say, I seen the devil and he's black and white. It was hundreds of fucking thousands, period. Ain't no way you can go city to fucking city, state to state, and everybody following you, period. And then my kids, still with a sharp tongue, talking that shit that let me know they was behind it, my daughter. Wait, don't t- if I want to get my ass whooped every day, you don't know. Would you want your daughter to be found fucking dead because she took one too many blows? 
Would you want one of your grandkids to turn up poison or dead because they in the house with a no good man who doing all kind of stuff? No, you would want to protect your own. And it don't matter a age. You get so grown. So then when you sick, don't call me. You grown. You don't need me. You know, we grown now. We grown. So be grown. When you go to jail, don't call me. When you go to the hospital, don't call me. When that nigga beating your head in, don't call me. When your car don't work, don't call me. <coughs> Because I'm only good for then. But any other time, we don't need you in our life. Stay away from my kids. And I already knew I ain't have a mama. Because I said, she ain't got no mama. Because she allowed him to keep my granddaughter away from me. That's not his daughter. The first one. But they tortured her. She's one years old and they torture her. Clean up, do this, do that, do this. This is it's not a life for a kid. But it's the life she has to live. When you talk to kids, you got to talk to them gently or whatever. If they do something, you need to discipline them and then you come hard. But just to walk in the room and say, who let that window open? Who did that? You giving them kids bad fucking nerves. You are destroying your seed and you don't even see it. I didn't do that to them. When I came home upset, it was because they broke something. They hurt one another. They did something they shouldn't have done. I had many patients bought them the world. They had all kinds of things their friends didn't have, but I had nothing. And it was okay with me as long as my house looked good and my kids looked good. I ain't have to have it. But now I'm spending some time for me and learning me and took that time thanks to my kids abandoning me who decided they wouldn't help me when I needed $300 to pay my rent and had to move because I couldn't and then got uh, to another state because I couldn't afford anything there but in the hood and then because I didn't want to live in the hood and have rats and roaches, you know, like I had done when I count uh, before. Because I had left for three months, came back, and I chose an apartment. The spirit told me to go there with rats and roaches, and it was abandoned and boarded up. Didn't know why. Because I was going to be tried like I wasn't humble. But they didn't see when I had already done that. They lied on me. I had lived in a place that was already boarded. Neighbors here, none in this whole roll of apartments. You got two over there, one around the block, and some over in that community. We was all like that. But I stepped on that ground where the spirit told me to. And now those apartments, they don't fix them up and they look gorgeous. Wherever I go, there will be change. So however the spirit chooses to use me, it ain't always pretty. It is never comfortable. It's always unorthodox. And it is my life. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. Sometimes I feel like I get tired. But I'll never say it's a burden because to those who say it's a burden, it is a curse on them. And that is in the word. So you don't call it a burden. I don't want to be burdened with that. Somebody told me. And literally when they said it, I found that scripture because the spirit was speaking. You better watch that tongue. It's two things you don't do. And that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit and curse the word of God, uh, the word the acts and um, the word of how it flows. You don't curse it. You will be cursed. Now, there is lies hidden in that truth. We know that. They altered it. But some is true. And you got to do the homework and find out. Do I have all the answers? Hell no. I'm still on the fucking learning field. Any man tell you they got the answers? They a damn lie because we have all got to go to the school of hard knocks and learn something. And I'm still learning. And I realize I know more than I know because it's the spirit that gives utterance. Because some things I just don't know, but the spirit will speak and teach me at that moment. Or is it that the old me from my past life remembers and is regurgitating these things. 
I had one daughter, she's so secretive about everything and cry if you tell her she did something wrong in her homework or anything. She want to be so perfect. Big liar too. She want to be so perfect. And when you tell her you fucked up, this ain't like this. Ah! As an adult. So what she wanted to do was come for me because I'm trying to take her daughter and it ain't me and da 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 da. But she played her hand too. And my daughter tried to jump me with the family member who stole my dogs. So when people tell you, um, you ain't had it hard. Hmm. If all your life you invested in your kids and gave and sacrificed. And they could burn you like a man on the street. You will learn. Keep your heart. Protect the heart like the Bible say. Don't give it to nobody. Don't cast your pearls to swine. Love those who love you back. And if that's one, that is great. That is great to have love. If it's two, that's wonderful. If it's the most high, that's magnificent. And I'm loved by the most high God. So I don't need your love. I don't need your approval. And thanks for abandoning me. Because when I was on my sick bed for three years in a wheelchair from a blood pressure pill, my entire family abandoned me. My entire family because I had money just before then with a group home and they got jealous. And so when a family member abused her kid and we picking it up for the weekend and taking it to the hospital to get medical treatment, they banned with her, the abuser of her child. Because I had money and jealousy and money, they don't mix. So, aunt call me. I hear you getting closed down. So, why would I call her when my uncle die? I ain't got nothing to talk to her about. We, we don't really mix. You disrespected me. Then I'm on the phone explaining you what happened, but you so busy carrying that light. And mind you, a step aunt. My uncle's, he never married her. Girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, whom he had kids with and hadn't been with her 40, 50 years, damn near. But she needed to hear from me when he died. That a bitch? Nobody called me when I had pneumonia in 2007. Nobody called me but to get all up in my mix and tell me I hear you getting closed down and I hear this and I hear that. You hearing the wrong shit. You hearing me about to walk away from this shit and open my store. Then they pulled the electric box off my store. So everything I owned in that store on a Sunday perished because we didn't open on Sunday. Monday we opened and walked into every ice. We had just got our ice creams all melted. All of our deli meats, 2000 something dollars worth of deli meats spoiling. And um, all the meats in the freezer, gone. We couldn't recover. We was new. So I end up being able to sign that store back over to the person I purchased it from. I put $8,000 down. We went through closing and everything. The attorney said at the closing table in the title and land company, we did all that. It was an official selling of that store. And she allowed me because she wanted it back if I couldn't because it meant something to her. It was her husband's. They had had it for many years. So I signed it back over to her and I thank her so much because it didn't ruin my credit. Just like that place I got evicted from didn't ruin my credit. I told that lady I used to make money and who I was and what I had been through. And she said, well, I don't own this house. I own a few houses. I got another house if you want to go look at some and I could put you in one. But when I went to go look, they were all in the wrong area that I would not put my kids in those schools. So I moved to a Got in the hotel room, 
looking stuff. Tennessee. My roots. Tennessee and the Carolinas. That's where we originally from. And I went back. And I went to another city that I hadn't been in. I didn't know it was a cultic city. I didn't know they did all kind of stuff there. And they had territorial issues. The kids was killing kids. If you come on my street, they got streets. You can't come on this street. You can go on the next street. I didn't know that. And I had a kid come the day we were moving. And kids and people helping me unload my truck. And I'm paying them. But this kid said, I don't want to be paid. I just want you to pray for me. And he marked my heart. And told me, why you bring your son here? Don't you know the gangs is bad? Well, no, I didn't. Well, my son got in school and he wasn't telling me. At 14, 15, they was telling him, shut up. You couldn't speak in school when he would speak. Silencing him. And they were all gang affiliated. And they would jump him. And you watch him getting off the bus fighting each other like some animals. So I took my son to another state so he can graduate fucking high school because we kept looking so we can just move to another area, put him in another school. Well, we couldn't find another area of house. There was nothing to rent unless we wanted to go live in um, the house where everybody was doing the shootings out in that apartment that I heard. Oh, don't move there. They bad. Everybody be shooting out there so you don't go there. But I guess I was supposed to move there with my son and be targeted. We from another state. So I didn't. I moved to another state because I couldn't find anywhere to go. No apartment. My daughter driving me around. We couldn't find nothing. I go and I find a house after I saw the house in the dream. State to state. I'm looking. We went all these different houses and the office about to close. And I'm nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Because I seen the house. Because the spirit always lead me where I'm going before I go. And when we pulled up on this one house, I said, that's it. I know it was it before I went in. When I went in, it was laid out just the way almost that the house I raised my kids in was laid. Tell me, won't the spirit do it? So I had to stay there for two years until my son graduated school. We knew nobody, had no contact. We were in the house. And the only thing we had was a neighbor that knocked on my door and said, where's your car? I said, I don't have one. That was my son's car when they moved me here. He said, well, if you need anything, let me know. We'll give you a ride to the store. And sure enough, Mr. Gardner gave me a ride for two years, him and this other lady, Tanya, for two years to the grocery store. Neighbors didn't ask me for a dollar. Now, I don't think I can call my family and ask for a ride for nothing. Well, I, had, I did an aunt. She picked me up from one city and took me to another state and no gas and bought me a hotel room. The same aunt who helped raise me. And I ran away from her house because it was hell. She had so much pressure on me. And then the man she was with, he was torturing me. And I decided no more. I'm going back to my mama's, even though I didn't like it there because everybody touching me. So I went back to my mama's house. My mama didn't even know who I was. Because I left as a kid and I'm returning as a teen. I left when I was eight, nine, turning nine. Turning nine, I was eight. To now I'm 13. And got on my little lip stuff and my hair curled. Yes, how can I help you? (laughs) You know, basically, yes. My, it's me. Oh, Jennifer, I didn't know who you was. But I'm also the one, she said, she fought it for taking her getting her kids taken away. How I get your kids taken away? I was one of your kids too. I was eight years old. So to say, when people want to tell you, you need to pray and we need to hear you pray to help you, we won't help you if we don't hear you pray. My Bible say, don't be like the pagans and pray for others to hear. When you praying, it is an intimate prayer with the Holy Spirit. And you don't need man's validation for your words. Because again, the enemy is listening too. And he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. 
and make sure that that thing don't come into fruition. So that is why they go in the church and they all pray because the enemy got them praying in earshot so he can steal their fucking prayer like he steal the fucking word as it's sown. So some fall on fertile ground, some fall on fallow ground, and some fall on stony ground. Some don't remember. What's, what's, ooh, church was good today, girl, that preacher preached. What he preach about? Girl, he was just telling us about, and you know, how people do this, and people would do you like that, and girl, that mess was so good. What was the word? A girl, that mess was so good. They don't remember the word. And if they do, they tell you, oh, he, he read out a chapter, Isaiah 10. Okay. What was the word? I tend to listen. When my pastor preaching, I'm taking the words out of his mouth. I'm staring in his mouth. I'm listening and seeing it. So when my kids over there doing something, I wasn't paying attention. And my pastor looked at me and I picked up the energy. So I looked at my kid and see, oh, my kid over there running his damn mouth instead of paying attention. Give him the eye. Then he'll start talking. Same thing we did in church, painted our nails and ran our mouth. My grandmother dragging us every Tuesday, every Friday and Sunday and Sunday night. And we didn't have to go back Sunday night if we had done our chores and we went Sunday morning. But we in the back painting our fingernails, popping our gum, running our mouth, talking about the cute boys. That's what church was. Gathering of the saints, huh? Where the saints is up front, and you can't say that. Mm, Sister Cabbage was talking about Sister Corn. I had a woman in the church tell me I was sitting in her seat. I didn't know they had labels on the chairs. The pews got labels on them. Did y'all know that? They got labels on them. You pay your tithes, and you pay enough tithes, that pew got your name on. Did you know that? And I had a mother who was very wise in the church tell me, you're doing the right thing. You're trying to do the right thing. But these people ain't going to be right. Because I was trying to hire members of the church. And they were causing me problems. Just as many problems as the people out of the church. Then in the small city, you hire somebody, you fire somebody. Who you hire next is her cousin. So they plotting. They already setting you up. Small minds, small mentality, small spirit, and they will be dealt with. And they have been dealt with. They have. I already know that. Some will be dealt with later because I have seen and heard from the spirit. Saving the best for last. That's something that keeps coming to me. Some people the spirit got to allow to go through a lot of shit. For them to see what they have done. And then had the dark night of the soul. And all sticks and bricks and hell and damnation come in on their head. Then they will see what they have done. So we have to stay positive as much as we can. Because if you stay up, they can't go up. You can come down to their level. I turn the guy... Um, in the exercise chair in the fitness room. I say, you like that exercise chair? I was just going to tell him about the hydro bit. I really love it. It is That thing is so good because I was always sitting in that that massage chair. And because I called it an exercise chair, he said, exercise chair? Like I had misspoke because of the stroke. But exercise, like I'm saying something crazy. I am so sick of demons. That they all around and then the speaking and acting like we cool. You phony. You got the knife in your hand. You sticking me in the back. You staring. That energy of you staring, I feel it. When you were in school or as an adult, you would feel people when they staring at you. You turn and so-and-so looking at you. You feel it. It's an energy. (laughs) So you can pretend to look and not look. I see you. I feel you. I know it. I don't have to even look. I feel it. And I watch him look. And then when I'm walking out, 
my third eye let me know I see them in my third eye looking at me when I walk from behind. Like they they examining my legs from behind. Can you examine my spine? Can you tell me about spondylosis? I got three herniated and three degenerated discs. Pressing on my nerve. I make it look good because I will not give in. I'm going to keep walking no matter how it feels. My legs feel heavy at times, tired. I have to go ground myself. I found that when I ground myself, they don't feel like that. So we have been bamboozled, told to take this, take that. I listened to Grammy and see all that swelling. And I went and I proved to Grammy. I had all them nerves sticking up out my feet. And I went and ground myself in some dirt on my patio. And they talking about the dirt I put in a flower pot on my patio to stick my feet in to ground myself so that I ain't just going sticking it in any kind of dirt. Oh, she grounding, she sticking her feet in dirt, she doing witchcraft. These were some black people doing it with some Caucasians who had them doing it, and they took that dollar. They sold they soul because they came against an anointed one for a dollar in a truck. Isn't that something? Did it really... Ain't nobody listening to Ricky Smiley, how he had it made all them goddamn years, and then the devil came to collect. Knock, knock. Who's there? Give me your firstborn. It's gonna happen. You ain't gonna make it to Holly Weird without giving up something. Well, I would never sacrifice. It ain't your choice. They choose who. The one who's most close to you who means something to you because it's got to pull on that heart so they can use that energy. It's witchcraft. It's the craft. 